The 4150 has a two-level menu structure. There is a calibration menu and also a options menu. This portion of the video, we will discuss the options menu only. To enter the options menu, we will first push and hold down the enter button for approximately three to five seconds. We will first see the word cal, the calibration menu, on the display, and after a moment, the word option should appear on the display. The first item in the options menu is the OP settings. OP settings stands for outputs. To enter this portion of the menu, I use the right arrow button. Now using the up and down arrows, I can select which type of outputs I want to use. I can choose 4 to 20 milliamps or RS-45 outputs. For this video, we will use the 4 to 20 milliamp output settings. Press the enter button and the 4150 saves the 4 to 20 milliamp output selection. Press the down arrow button once and now we can range the 4 to 20 milliamp output signal. We will first start with the low limit range which is your 4 milliamp value. The 4150 will be factory defaulted to 0.02 NTUs. If the low limit range needs to be changed, press the right arrow button to enter the menu. Again using the right arrow button allows you to navigate horizontally across the display. Use the up and down arrows to increase or decrease the numeric values on the display. Press enter to save your changes. Press the down arrow button once and this will allow the upper limit of the 4 to 20 milliamp output signal to be adjusted. The 4150 factory default value for the 20 milliamp is 10 NTUs. If the process has a slightly higher turbidity level, use the keypad to change the 20 milliamp value to the appropriate turbidity level. For this video, we will increase the NTU value from 10 to 20 NTUs. Press the enter button to save your changes. The 4 to 20 milliamp output of the 4150 is now active and is ranged from 0.02 to 20 NTUs. Press the arrow down button once and now we can activate and set up two mechanical relays that can be used as alarms. Starting with alarm 1, the relays come from the factory in the off position. First press the right arrow button and now using the up and down arrows I can choose the relay alarms to be either high or low alarms. For the purpose of this video, I am going to set it to a high alarm. Press enter to save your settings. Press the down arrow button once and this will allow you to enter the actual NTU or FNU value that would activate the relay and trigger an alarm. First press the right arrow button to enter the menu and use the keypad to navigate the display and change the set point value for the application. Press the enter button to save your changes. Press the down arrow button once and you notice on the display the term DLY and a arrow pointing upward. This feature eliminates false alarms due to unavoidable spikes in turbidity levels that would normally go away after a short period of time. An operator can program a time delay from 1 to 30 seconds. During this time delay period, the alarm relay will not activate until after the delay time has been exceeded. If the turbidity levels reduce below the set point, the alarm will not activate after the time delay period expires. We leave the setting at the factory default setting of 1. Press the down arrow button once and the term DLY and an arrow pointing downward will be on the display. This feature is used to maintain the relay activation after the alarm situation is over. Just like the delay on feature, the operator can choose from 1 second to 30 seconds for this feature. For this video, we will leave the settings at the factory default settings of 1 second. Press the down arrow button once and now we have access to relay number 2. This relay is activated and programmed just like relay number 1. Relay 2 can also be programmed to either be a high or a low alarm and also has the delay functions as in relay number 1. Press the down arrow button once and we come to the offset calibration menu. We are not going to discuss this menu feature at this time. This will be discussed and covered in the calibration section of the video. Press the down arrow button once and the term code will be displayed. The turbidimeter comes from the factory without any password protection. Press the right arrow button to enter the menu 
and then use the up and down arrow keys to select on and press enter to save the change. Now the 4150 will require the standard signet password code of up 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 down to do any modifications to the menu. Press the down arrow button once and the term EXTD is displayed. This is the extended menu functions. Once the extended menu functions is activated by first using the right arrow button and setting the menu from the off to the on position, this will allow you to change many single set point options that may only be required to be adjusted upon the initial commissioning of the instrument. As we press the down arrow button while in the extended menu, the term RESP will be displayed. RESP stands for response time and determines how quickly the 4150 responds to changes in turbidity levels. The response time scale is from 1 to 100 and the factory default setting is 10. A response time of 1 will update the display every 5 seconds. The factory default setting of 10 will update the display every 50 seconds during increases or decreases of turbidity level. Press the down arrow button once and the term RES will be displayed. RES stands for resolution. The 4150 can display up to four decimal places. The factory default is two. This can easily be adjusted depending upon the customer's application requirements. For this video, we will leave this sentence at the factory default setting of two decimal places. Press enter to save your changes. Press the down arrow button again and the term BRT will be displayed. This feature allows the operator to change the light intensity of the backlit display. The display brightness scale is from 1 to 10 and is easily adjusted to your customer's preference. I will leave the level at 8 for the demonstration of this video. Press enter to save your changes. Press the down arrow button once and the term unit will be displayed. This menu allows the operator to change the units of measurements from NTU to FNU. NTU meets the EPA standard 180.1 for turbidity measuring and recording. FNU meets the ISO standard 7027. For the purpose of this video, we will use the NTU settings. Remember to press enter to save your changes. Press the down arrow button once and the term CLN will be displayed. If you have a 4150 with ultrasonic cleaner option, this will allow you to shut off this option if necessary by entering the menu and changing the display from on to off. Default settings from the factory will have this feature on. Press enter to save your changes. Press the down arrow button once and the term DESC will be displayed. During part 2 of the video where we assembled and installed the 4150 we installed the desiccate pouch. The dry desiccate pouch is very important in the removal of moisture from the air that circulates within the instrument itself and prevents moisture from forming on the glass cuvette. Changing the menu feature from the factory default setting of off to on will display the term DESC on the display of the 4150 once the desiccant pouch reaches 50% saturation. Once DESC is seen on the display, the operator should purchase a new desiccant pouch and plan on installing it very soon. Press enter to save your changes and now this completes the review of the options menu. Arrow down once and this will take you to the top of the options menu structure. 